everybody. I'm Tamara Aragon, and um, your host today is Donna Parto, and she's founder and CEO of the Book Launch. Her mission is helping kingdom-driven messengers turn their God ideas into an Amazon number one bestseller. And uh, I'm Tamara Aragon. I'm a lifestyle freedom trailblazer, real estate investor, trainer, and solopreneur success consultant. And I've known and worked alongside Donna. You know, I said 17 years, Donna. I think I need to say 18 now. We got to move that. Uh, today, I'm privileged to be a part of the book launch with Donna, uh, providing strategy sessions to those who apply to follow Donna's system and turn their own book into an Amazon number one bestseller. Um, and in fact, one of those strategy sessions, I had the privilege and blessing of meeting who you're going to get to meet today. And I can't wait for you to meet them. Um, our host, Donna Parto, is the author of more than 30 books that have sold over 1.5 million copies worldwide. Uh, her ministry has taken her to some 40 nations on six continents. I, I think you only have one less left to visit, Donna. Antarctica, here I come. Uh -huh. Somebody you're wearing <laughs> black and you know, white. Aura light, what are those aura, the lights or something over there in Iceland? Oh, no, that's the opposite. That's oh, that's the, the other one. You saw that. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I did see that. Antarctica. You can, we gotta, uh -huh. That's why you're wearing black and white in honor of the penguins. Yeah, I'll have to let you take that trip alone. Uh, total sales for her books and events right now on online trainings and all that she's do uh, done and accomplished exceed $40 million today. And right now, her primary focus is utilizing all those skills and all that she's done in raising up new voices and shining spotlight on those God who has, has called to take a message to the world through the power of a published book. Um, Donna's created a proven pathway, which I have witnessed repeatedly 100% with everybody that you worked with, Donna. It's just amazing uh, to, uh, that can follow her and how she has successfully done it to successfully plan, publish, and promote your book. Uh, her coaching clients consistently achieve Amazon number one bestseller status, yep. and they skyrocket their impact and their income. So to learn more about the book launch program, uh, you can visit donnaparto.com, visit uh, forward slash bestseller after this program. I hope you stay on for a few minutes to, to see who Donna's uh, going to bring on here in a minute. So I'm going to go off my video, Donna, unless you have anything else you want me to add. Um, I'll, I'll probably miss you while you're Well, here. I'll be here. And in fact, I want to say I'm going to be on chat. Say awesome. hello to people. Uh, whenever you say a, a domain name or a reference, I'll put it there. So converse with me if you feel like it. Um, but I want to give you your full attention to Donna and her guests right now. And I just thank you for being here. And I know you're just going to be blessed. And I'll be probably circling back here at the end. Yeah, we'll see you. We'll see you uh, in, a in, in a few minutes. Yeah, right? a little bit. <laughs> well, the first thing that I always like to do is put everyone's mind at ease because usually when you're on a Zoom, it's either someone's trying to make you work, no, or someone's trying to sell you something. And so everybody can just heave a great sigh of relief. Neither of those things are going to happen today. We are just here to bless you. And in fact, we've got lots of fun gifts and giveaways and prizes to tell you about as our hour together progresses. Again, I'm Donna Parto, and I'm welcoming you to the Lifestyle Freedom Show with Donna Parto. And my special guests today are the authors of this brand new book, God Can Change Your Heart, How to Heal When You're Still Hurting and Don't Know Why. And it's, it's kind of like, if you can relate to this, like, I forgave them. I'm over it. I prayed that prayer. Somebody prayed over me. I read a book. I did a study. I mean, I, I think I'm good. I'm good to go. But the truth is you're still hurting. And you're like, I, I feel like I've done everything. What else? What else am I supposed to do? Can anyone relate? In fact, if you can relate to that, just go ahead and type it in the chat and say, totally with you, Donna. I hear you. I've got it. I think once in a while, man, you're surprised. You're like, ouch, that hurt. I, I thought I was over that, but it's still there. Well, that's what we're going to be dealing with today when we discuss some really key truths from this book, God Can Change Your Heart, with the authors, Dr. Timothy and Donna McFall. Uh, Dr. McFall is a teacher, a prophet, a revivalist, a prophetic healer, 
uh, anointed to give gifts of healing and words of knowledge. I wish I had that gift. That's like a cool gift. Isn't that one of those gifts that you all want? Don't you wish you'd be like, have words of knowledge about people? That's really cool. So that's one of his gifts. And uh, he's done revival meetings all over and really saw God move in a powerful way. His doctorate is in theology. So if you have theological questions, you can ask him later. Um, him and his wife have been in ministry for nearly 50 years, happily married. They've got, I love them because they have an old German shepherd just like me. That's one of our, we're bonding whenever we're like zooming together we've got our german shepherds lounging in the background because you know once those german shepherds are old they pretty much want to lay around and have you rub their tummy and fortunately they still look fierce and it keeps the bad bad people away okay um they have in addition to being in ministry they've also started numerous multi-million dollar businesses that's not our topic today but that might be a really good topic for another day uh, their first book uh, has a forward by a man that you may have heard of, um, Jesse Duplantis, because they used to travel in ministry with him. So uh, we are here with a good group. They've been married for 52 years. They've got two grown kids. Very jealous to tell you that they have three grandchildren. That bothers me a little, but what really bothers me is the seven great grandchildren. What? That's amazing. Welcome, Tim and Donna. Well, thank you very thank much. You. We're glad to be here. Thank you, Donna, yes, very we much. We're glad to have you. We're glad to have you. Well, let's dive in. This this book, kind of a foundational concept, is that God created something for our good and for our protection, but it can backfire on us. And you call that the self-protective mechanism, which God gave us because he loves us, but it goes haywire. Tell, tell us about that. What is that self-protective mechanism? Let's start there. Well, one thing is that obviously it's part of us that's inside of us. It's part of the subconscious mind. But basically what happens is he built this self-protective mechanism so we won't continue to hurt ourselves. It doesn't mean that we don't do it, but, you know, it's like if you get burnt, uh, you won't burn yourself again. And so something happens once you have that extreme pain, it does something to your subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind and heart are the same thing. So uh, what happens to you is, for instance, I, I talk about where I got snake bit when I was 14 years old. And the trauma of that snake bit, what it done is it done something deep inside the structure of my subconscious mind. And it caused me not to be able to be around snakes. I mean, there's just, it's innate fear to where I can't even, you know, I just can't get near one. And as a result of that, uh, the same thing happens to us in relationships when you get burnt really bad. Uh, it causes us to not be around someone. You know, we've done marital counseling for like 35 years and we'd have women to say, you know, I love him, but I can't stand to be around him, not knowing that that self-protective mechanism is going off. So the it's, you know, it's a wonderful thing on the inside of us because it keeps you from hurting yourself over and over again. But if it turns on somebody and one of the things that happens, especially in relationships, uh, you have verbal abuse and, and the woman will say, you know, it doesn't bother me. I'm okay with that. I, I, I don't remember it. But what happens is that subconscious mind down inside of you, it remembers it. It's like, no, I, and, and so one day something snaps. It's like, I can't do this anymore. Not understanding it's from a subconscious level, not a conscious level. And like you said, you know, we go on for maybe 20 years and don't think of it on a, on a conscious level. But what happens is somebody will walk into the room that you haven't seen in 20 years. Then all of a sudden it treats that person as if it's the snake. It's like, okay, God, okay, get me out of here. I don't want to be around this person, not knowing that that's what's went off. And so it's a tremendous thing to help protect us. But if it turns on someone and it can turn on children, it can turn on family. I mean, I've seen best friends, it'll turn on just because of the pain and not knowing that that's what's driving it. And then if you bring that into another relationship, it begins to create trouble. So it's, it's, right. a so it's one thing. It's one thing to be a bit afraid of a snake, which is, Probably a good idea. I mean, I've never been yeah. bit by a snake, but I don't even want to be around them. So it's one thing to be afraid of a snake, right. or it's one thing to be afraid of burning yourself on the stove once you've done that. It's another thing, like I, I tripped and fell in a parking lot last year. Um, and now I'm like kind of tentative even with that. It's another thing when you become afraid of people, yeah. right? That's when it really begins yeah. to backfire. And we can begin to isolate ourselves and become so guarded of our heart that we don't, we don't want to let anyone, we don't want to let anyone in. 
So, how did, so what's the fastest way to recognize that this self-protective mechanism is on overdrive and you've gone too far in trying to protect yourself? I think what it is, is you have to be willing to take a look at yourself because what happens in relationships, it's like you build these walls and you won't let nobody behind that wall. Okay. I mean, what happens is you find yourself receding to where you have very few friends. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is you don't want to take a chance again. If you've been burnt by friends or you've been burned in relationships, it's like somebody gets married again and they're, they got a wall up. Okay. They're not, you know, they're standing on that side of the wall. I love you, but I'm not letting you inside that wall. Okay. Because they're not going to take a chance of getting hurt again. So then when you start to recede, you find yourself having less amount of friends because of the fear you actually begin to go into that protective mechanism to work okay, i don't i don't want the relationship it's too painful and uh, and you don't do it on a conscious level you do it on a subconscious level and you find yourself just you know you'll find sometime you'll find fault with somebody intentionally just so you don't have to have the relationship and so when you find yourself doing that then it's a good recognition to say okay maybe i maybe i need to take a look at myself and god has a whole system in his word about forgiveness and going through that process of being able to eliminate them. So I, I think another place, so that explains why second marriages fail at such yeah. an enormous rate that even though this is a new person that you want to open your heart to, God hasn't really changed your heart yet at the deepest level. And you're still on guard and you're still protecting yourself. You're like, Okay, I've been bit before. Am I going to be bit again? I think another area where this shows up is church. How many people after, you know, COVID was kind of like, ooh, I've got an excuse not to go anymore. And now the doors are open back at church. And even like our church is like, we've given up on the idea that everybody's coming back. People aren't going back. And I think part of that reason maybe um, is that you've been bit by the church and you're like, okay, well, I'll, I'll protect myself. Uh, I won't be, I, you know, but then, then it becomes, then you're trapped, right? Well, I, 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 I can't have, I don't want to get a church. They might hurt me. I, you may not want to go to the grocery store. Somebody there hurt you. So if your world is getting smaller and you, right, is that, that's like a big clue if your world yeah, right. is getting a lot smaller yeah. or your no, relationships are shallower and yeah, bless your heart. I'm great. Everything's fine. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. I, you know, we yeah. dealt with counseling with people that have phobias of things and basically they couldn't even go grocery shopping because they was concerned that they're going to run into somebody or, you know, see somebody that they, that they knew. And it's like, my God, you know, it's like, I mean, they could deal with strangers, but they couldn't deal with somebody that they knew that, that somehow or another they associated with that, uh, you know, they run from them. I mean, and so, yeah, I, I think it's it's caused a great, it's one of the things we don't hear much in church about, but in church, you can get burnt, you know, obviously, uh, you don't try to get burned in church and nobody tries to do that. But basically, when you put more than two people together, you have the opportunity to have issues <laughs> in any structure, in any organization, in business, it's the same way. Right. And so I think without getting that out of us, uh, God has a hard time using us. And if we want to be used of God, we've got to be able to purge those things and get them purged from us. Psychology is good. Thank God for, you know, Sigmund Freud, Ig, Ego, and Superego, and all these different areas, and Harry Stack Sullivan, and Carol Horney out of the 40s, and B.F. Skinner in the 70s. Thank God for those people. Uh, but, you know, they didn't, they didn't come forward with a way of getting this purged from you. And God has a way of renewing our mind and getting. Yeah, let's, let's talk. Let's talk about that. I, I think yeah. probably, in fact, everybody who's listening, let's make this a little bit interactive. If if you've noticed that maybe your world's getting a little bit smaller, or you're cautious, and we want to balance wisdom, right? We, yeah. we want to be wise. We don't want to be idealistic. That was always my downfall. My pastor said to me one time, Donna, your idealism will be the death of us all. So we want to be. We want to be really okay. People hurt each other. That's just kind of a normal part of life. That's expected. No one's perfect. We're all sinners. Get a bunch of sinners in the room. We're all hurting each other. That's all. That's all normal. But we need to deal with the hurts. We need to purge those heart hurts from our heart. So why don't you talk about that briefly? How, how do we purge those hurts from our heart? Well, I think obviously, you know, it takes the blood of Jesus to cleanse our heart. And there's enough power in the blood of Jesus to cleanse that from you. I mean, we, you know, when you start saying, and again, as I said, secular psychology can help you to alleviate it and they can help replace it with something else. But the blood of Jesus actually can cleanse that out of you. Thank God for that. I mean, he can just like the day you were born again, you became a new creature. Well, he, the blood of Jesus can actually cleanse that from you. But then also, uh, sometimes it requires action. 
And that means he said, you know, good, good to those that have done you wrong. He said, turn the other cheek. Well, you know, it's, it's one thing to turn the other cheek when somebody is trying to curse you. He said, bless those that are cursing you. Well, you know, uh, those are direct attacks. And so Jesus's answer was, is that you had to do something. He said, do good to those that misuse you and pray for those and bless those that are cursing you. Well, you know, cursing means that somebody is trying to stop your marriage or trying to stop your job. They're trying to do something to your children. You know, they're actually trying to do something to you. Or even, even speaking, if, right? A curse can just be speaking ill of you. Exactly. It can just be trying to damage you somehow or another, your reputation. You know, somebody yeah. tells, and it's amazing how there's an anointing to listen <laughs> about somebody saying something bad about you. What did they say about me? What did they say? <laughs> and, but the, Jesus said, turn the other cheek. And I will tell you, that is not an easy thing to do. We, we mm -hmm. talk about it. Um, and then he talks about, you have to put action with it sometime. And so I talk about that, you know, how important it is sometime to give from the heart. Yeah, let's, so, let's talk about that for a minute. Okay. Um, because I think that it's a really important point. Um, a lot of people, uh, in the church, a lot of pastors, a lot of sermons, we've all heard, you know, pray, pray, prayer to forgive that person. And that's great. But you're advocating, and I, I really agree, to actually do, actually do something yeah. for the person who hurt you or in the name of. So if that person is just, you know, it's just so broken, they're, they're not going to receive it that you could actually do something good in their name, like make a donation to a ministry in their name, give a gift in their name. Talk, talk a little bit about that. Well, you know, I, I, I explained about how I had an individual that was trying to stop what I was doing. And, and so I took, a, I had this, I've, I've always been, a, have weapons and stuff, and I won't talk about that, but <laughs> I got rid of them all at one time because I got too consumed with having weapons. That's part of the military part of, you know, you, you like these weapons. So I took one of my most prized possessions because the Lord told me I needed to do something. And so I wanted to give him something I really didn't care about. And, and the Lord really just dealt with me that you know, if I was giving it to my father, my earthly father, what would I give him? What would I, you know, what would I give him? And it's like, well, I probably would give him this pistol, okay, this weapon. And so uh, I gave it to him and then he accused me of trying to buy his love. And so I wanted, you know, and it upset me then because yeah, that's what I'm saying. I want my pistol back. Why <laughs> over here? What is I wanted my weapon back, okay, because it didn't work. And so well, then I, back to idealism, right? You know, well, idealism okay. would be, well, I'm going to give this person a gift and they're going to receive it. Right. And they're it's going to turn out the way excited, I want it yeah. to turn out. But we don't get attached to the outcome, right? We're yeah. not responsible for how that person responds. That's so their that was, response yeah. ability. That's their response ability but what we can control is our action we can do something and leave the response and the ability to respond with that other person and not get attached to it ended up looking a certain way i think that's what takes us down sometimes so anyway continue your story well i think but you know this give away i think this is what you know I, I so then the lord dealt with me about start giving things on his behalf Okay, and so I like then I, I, I selected two more weapons I had, and then I started giving some other things away. And finally, after about four months, I said, Lord, I said, this isn't working. He's getting worse. <laughs> and I said, you know, he's not changing one bit. And the Lord dealt with me really strongly. He said, I haven't been working on him. I've been working on you. I said, don't you hate that? Me. Yeah, that's what we're doing. I don't like that at all. Why does God do me. that? You know, working on me. So I, I, I think that was the point. I, I told the Lord, I said, if I knew you was working on me, I would have changed much quicker. So I wouldn't <laughs> have to give all these weapons up. <laughs> but true. I think it, it goes back to this again. If we're going to walk in God, we got to walk in love. And if you That's can't right. love your enemy, uh, who you see, Jesus says you can't love him whom you have not seen. And so uh, one of the things. And let's that, take a minute to apply that. Can we do let, Let's just take a minute to apply before we move okay. on. I know you're a preacher and you love to preach. But let's <laughs> let's implement for a second. I want everyone who's listening, whether live or on the replay, we need to take a minute. And think about that person that if they walked into the room right now, it'd be like, awkward, <laughs> right. ouch. And I want you to think about, is there something, and just begin to pray, is there a way that you could, you know, the Bible says, trust in the Lord and do good. Is there anything good that you could do for that person or someone that they love? Or could you do something like Tim just said, in their name? in their honor, 
because they're just, they're not going to receive it or you don't know. Maybe they will. Maybe, maybe test the waters, but ask the Lord, is there some way that you can tangibly bless that person and in some way? And if you just don't think, eh, that's not going to happen at all. Um, could you make a donation? Could you give something away? in their name, in their honor. I, I would love if anybody wants to jump into the chat, maybe it's too personal, you don't want to share it, but um, jot that down and, and take action. I think one of the weaknesses in the church is that we're, it's so much in our head. You know, we're listening to sermons, we're hearing great ideas. We think, yeah, I ought to do that. But we need to take action. We need to do good, not just think about good or pray about good, but actually do. So I like this. I really like this idea. Okay, back to you. Okay, so the other thing too is the Lord dealt with me about. I had was working with some someone else. You know, you think you would learn this process fairly quickly, yeah. but what happens is the devil knows to get you in trouble with God. All he's got to do is get you in trouble with people. Oh, stop! Say yeah. that again. Say it again. <laughs> I said the devil knows to get you in trouble with God. All he's got to do is get you in trouble with people. Oh, that's and so good. I told the Lord, I, I said, you know, if it wasn't for down. people, you know, if it wasn't for people, me and you could get along very well. It's that oh. people factor. You know, if you just leave the <laughs> Listen, people. Tim, out, I'm going to tell you, there is could, no more spiritual woman on earth than you know, me when I wake up before anyone else in my house. I am just, I'm amazing. Mother Teresa, Heidi <laughs> Baker. Uh, I mean, they'd be jealous. Love, yeah. They'd be jealous. Well, it's like I have my coffee. I've got my Bible. I've got my quiet time. I am an angel. <laughs> well, we could be that monk, you know, we could move to the monastery and live a great life, you know, just with me and God, yeah. I still want to go to church with all those people. It's that people factor. And That's so it. I think, you know, it comes back to where I had a, some other ones I was working on, and the Lord dealt with me to put them at the top of my prayer list, because, you know, I, I go through a prayer list, praying for my family, providing a covering, you know, right. speaking the word over them and praying over them. Right. And the Lord dealt like. with me about We pray for people prayer. we like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I didn't want to do it. I said, I'm not putting them at the top of my prayer list. And he said, don't, there's no sense you even having a prayer list if you're not going to put them at the top because it's the unforgiveness. The only thing I know that'll stop your prayers from working. I mean, the only thing I know, it doesn't thievery or stealing. I'm not indicating that we, you know, go steal or lie or deception. But the only thing I know when I go to pray for somebody, if they have unforgiveness, it stops the power of God yeah. from working in yeah. their life. That's the only thing I know that stops it. That's and the so, number one prayer blocker, right? Then, And I think everybody blocker. knows this, right? Intellectually, everybody knows the biggest prayer blocker is unforgiveness. But what I love is that we're we're giving you something to do. We're making it practical. We're making it tangible. And I like that. And I, I think, you know, just I, I tell people about the recent election. I said, you know, people hate Trump. They hate Biden. They hate everybody. And I said it was one of the most slickest tricks that the devil done. And I'm not glorifying the devil, but I said it was very slick. He causes everybody to hate everybody. And I said, you know, it just they have this uh, and they don't know that it stopped their prayers. And so I said, the devil stopped most people's prayers just with the election. And I said, you know, you can't, you can't have ill against anybody. You, I mean, obviously you have to protect yourself. It's like the Lord dealt with me. I said, well, what about just people that, you know, intentionally try to hurt you? He said, well, I had to slip through the crowd when they tried to stone him there on the porch of Solomon, you know, when he said he was, you know, he was God. Uh, he said, I had to slip through the crowd. So he said, it's good for you to not even go around the crowd. So there's certain people you need to stay away from because yeah. they will hurt you. I mean, it's not wrong to stay away from people. And if somebody's, you know, physically abusing somebody, then they need to call 911 and let them bring out Ren 1010. You know, so I, I don't advocate standing in a, an abusive relationship because that's wrong, too. I think, you know, we have to be smart enough to say I need to separate myself. Even Jesus separated himself from the crowd when they were trying to kill him. He didn't stand there and say, turn the other cheek and do, get, take your best shot, boys. In other words, he slipped through the crowd. That's what he said. That's what the scripture said. And so I think we need to stay away from certain people. And so it's not wrong to stay away from certain people. It's just that we have to love people. You, this is the way that this is the difference is some people are not likable and you're required to love unlikable people. Some people are just not likable. OK, they're just no matter what you do, you can't like them. I mean, you know, yeah. you, you can work on it, but you can't. They just are unlikable. And so as a result, but you're required to love unlikable people. You don't you don't have to necessarily like somebody because likability and mental likeness has nothing to do with love. When you put somebody at the top of your prayer list, you're applying love. You're doing the action. You're doing the things that the gospel has told us to do. And so, again, uh, not everybody's going to be likable. Not every, and, and the devil will see to that. That's one of the things that the Apostle Paul had trouble with. You know, he'd go into a town, they'd love him, and then they'd try to kill him. And That's it right. took him about three or four times before he finally, we, we call it, 
get real, Paul, it's a devil, okay? It's a devil factor that the devil will assign a spirit to stop you. And I don't want to get into spiritual part because I didn't go into that fully in the book. I just, basically, it's about where the apostle Paul finally learned that his problems were spiritual. Because if you start to do anything for God, right. I will guarantee you somebody will not like you. I guarantee you you'll have enemies. If you're doing anything for God, Jesus said, beware when all men speak good of you. That's what Jesus said. His take, beware when people are speaking good. So you're probably not people, doing anything. You're not doing anything. So if you're doing anything for the gospel, the devil will see to it that he will find somebody that will make it their mission in life to try to stop you. And your point is, is you know, the main point is to be able to forgive that person and move on and, and not get caught up in it because it will hinder your prayers. I mean, I we got to a place where, uh, we didn't even have toilet paper. I mean, we got to a place to where we had no money to pay bills. We couldn't do anything at all. And that's when we started really taking a look at our life to say, God, we need to get this purged out of us. And what it did every time, uh, like the, the two people that I was praying for and put them at the top of my prayer list, I started blessing them. I started praying blessings on them. Well, all of a sudden, those blessings turned on me because the Lord dealt with me. He said, he said, really, you'd like for them to get what's coming to them. And I had to be honest. Right. I really would like to have somebody maybe, and this sounds terrible. I would like to somebody maybe to, you know, break their leg or something or maybe hurt themselves, do something because they were causing me such trouble. That's snakey. But, Go get them for a change. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, why don't the devil work on them? Yeah. And why so, don't the snakes show up at their house? Why is it? Yeah, house? What's up with that? Yeah, hey, yeah. Let them have some little bit of retribution. Let them get a little bit of karma coming back to them. But what I did is I started to bless and we started with specifically right. blessing and praying for blessings for them. And then all of a sudden something snapped. I mean, I'm talking about. All of a sudden, here, this financial door opened up for us. We seen how to make money. It was like we'd never seen it before. We were started businesses, but we had not seen it. And all of a sudden, the blessings I were paying, play, praying on them started to come back to us. And I seen and it. You was, build, and you build a million dollar business, right? Multiple oh, it, it went, it, it, within about six months. I mean, within six months, we were everything was cleared up. Everything was done. And we were well on our way for our first multi-million dollar business. And so I you and went worked, from... You went, you went from, you couldn't no afford toilet paper. toilet paper within six months. You were well on your way to building a million dollar business. Everybody wanted to tell you uh, that my guest today is Dr. Timothy and Donna McFall. They are the authors of this brand new book, uh, God Can Change Your Heart, How to Heal When You're Still Hurting and You Don't Know Why. And I want to mention that they do have a website that you can go to. This book is available free all this week if you're joining us live. It's free on Amazon Kindle. You can go to their website, godcanchangeyourheart.com, godcanchangeyourheart.com. There's no spaces in there. There's no hyphens in there. Those words are just all smushed on together. Godcanchangeyourheart.com. Uh, for those of you who follow my ministry and you know my name, Donna Parto, you can go to donnaparto.com forward slash heart. And that will take you right to the place on Amazon where you can download your free copy of the book, God Can Change Your Heart, all this week on Amazon Kindle. Um, if you're watching the replay at some point, it's still a bargain. If you're a member, member of Kindle Unlimited, uh, you can get it free there. You can borrow it in that lending library, uh, or you can put up a few bucks. Well worth the read. Uh, they map out the exact steps, the process that God gave them. I just want to make sure sometimes we just open up the fire hose and we're throwing so much information at you. I really just want to pause for a minute and let you process the power of what he just said. They couldn't afford toilet paper. And they began to work through this process that God gave them in this book. It's just basic biblical principles, but kind of put a, put together in a fresh way. So it's like fresh, uh, it's a new outfit. <laughs> it's a fresh take on some eternal truths that we all know, but we don't apply. And within six months, they were on their way to the first multi-million dollar business. And there really is power in this. And I, I often say, for those of you who uh, maybe know my book, The Special Blessings Prayer, that nothing unleashes the favor of God like a godly response to an unfair situation. Because that invites the favor of God. What is favor? Favor is when God gives you an unfair advantage, right? So yeah, people yes. are treating you unfairly. Yes. yes. And God sees that, that this is totally unfair. It's not right. God sees that you are doing the right thing. 
you're honoring your blood. Like he told you to pray blessings on them, do something even for them if you possibly can, or in their name if you can't do it right for them. God sees that. He sees your heart. He's changing your heart. He sees that you're partnering with him in that process. And God pours out his favor on your life because favor is when he gives you an unfair advantage. This is really powerful stuff. Also on that same website, godcanchangeyourheart.com. That's where you'll find out uh, Tim and Donna have some other resources. They have a package of uh, really powerful prayers that you can pray. Um, They have a contest that you'll want to be part of. And you can learn more about it on their uh, website that if you get a copy of the paperback, and post your, well, I've already done that. Don't worry about it. Um, that they're going to have a drawing for a beautiful coach purse. And you can get it in red or black, but they're going to be awarding it in time for Valentine's Day. So picture yourself, go do what they're talking about. Start blessing that person that you don't want to work, walk in the room. Start praying blessings on them. Ask God to change your heart towards them and say, God, I'm going to win. I'm winning that purse. And then you'll be on Valentine's Day with your designer. That is one styling purse. So you can find out about that. They also have a Facebook group where they're going to be having a, how long is your, uh, your challenge? What's the name of it? Three days. Okay, so you have a three-day kind of God can change your heart event that's going to be live in their Facebook group, and you can get all of that information on their website, which is godcanchangeyourheart.com. So I hope that you'll check all of that out. Uh, Lots of great stuff that they're giving away free, uh, including a copy of this book. I know you'll want to get a copy of it and uh, go to their website right away and check that out. Okay, so you talk about... um, is there anything more practical that you want to share about how to forgive? Because we all know I got to forgive them. Any, any well, other practical ideas that you want to share? Or are we ready to move on to the next topic? Well, I think, you know, it, it works so well on the blessing part that I, I said, you know, I kidded that we went shopping for people's enemies because we couldn't, yeah. you know, because it works so well. It was like, oh, thank God. This is another opportunity. Yay! To turn the so I mean, it actually, me. Quick. It worked better than me confessing the word and, you know, declaring blessings. This seemed to work even better than anything oh, I've ever done. Oh, say so, that again. Somebody's you know, got to say that again. Yeah. You, you, somebody better get a pen. Somebody better type this in the chat. Did you hear what the man just said? Say it again. Yeah, I, I think it works so well that, you know, we went shopping for uh, people's enemies so I could help bless my friends' enemies. I, in fact, I'd say, you guys got anything going on in your life? You know, got anything? I said, I'll start blessing them for you. I said, you go see a change. And, and I'd have friends who would look at me, you know, like, are you crazy? And we want them, their legs broke. Because you know? it worked better than yeah. confessing it. And the whole yeah. church is recite every, every, all, everyone I talk to who wants to be one of my authors Every, almost every one of them is like, oh, I want to teach people the power of affirmations and speaking the word of God and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And everybody's doing, which is great. It's wonderful. I mean, I, it's, in, it's in my books too. I believe in the power of affirmations. I believe in the power of confessing God's word. Totally. It's great. But what I hear you saying and what I've experienced too is that, yes, you do that. But then the next step is actually taking action. I love this. That was great. We get to re- we get to rewind. I'm going to get that clip and I'm going to put it on YouTube. It's going to go viral. Anyway. Okay. Um, anything else you, you want to say about dealing with your enemies? Although now, oh. now I guess that your advice is go hunt down some enemies so you can bless them. That's good. I like that. <laughs> is there anyone well, else who hurt my feelings? Devil. I'm going to buy him a present. Obviously, the devil will see to that. I don't think you have to go look for him. No, the mean. devil will see to that. I mean, the Apostle Paul experienced that. You know, again, he'd get on a ship and the ship would go down or he would go to town and they'd try to stone him. They'd love him one day and try to kill him the next day. And so I think, you know, once we realize that there's a spiritual world out there is that things are taking place. That's what we have to be cautious of is that the spiritual world is at op- in operation. And so, you know, we're very aware of many things, but the unforgiveness area, and I, I, I don't know if you, you know, the blood of Jesus has the power to cleanse it out of us. And that's what we have to apply, but it has to be done by faith. And I think what happens when we ask for forgiveness 
uh, you know, we ask for forgiveness by faith. In other words, it's a faith action. You know, Mark's Gospel 11 chapter talks about when I ask for forgiveness, I believe I receive it now. And so I go to my Father God and I say, Father, you know, I ask forgiveness for this. And I, you know, I most of this has been by experience. And one of the experiences I had was when I was working in the sawmill. Uh, the guys, when I got saved, they turned mean. I mean, they turned vicious. You had a bunch of old codgers out there that just, you know, in the sawmill, <laughs> they, they, were, they were quite a group of, of these older guys. And so one of them would give me trouble all the time. And so one day I tried, I, I said, let's just go outside and fight. I tried to get him to go outside and fight with me. I know that's terrible. You know, as a Christian, <laughs> I just been saved, you know, but I had reached the point. They had pushed me to the point to where I, I physically wanted to fight. And so then he he wouldn't go outside with me. And so then they did leave me alone. Okay. But they realized that I was willing to fight. They left me alone, right. but I began to ask for forgiveness and all week long. It was, that was happening on a Monday. And by Friday, I'm driving home and I'm saying, God, you know, I'm, I'm asking for forgiveness. I'm sorry for what I did. And he spoke very clearly to me. He said, I don't know what you're talking about. I said, what do you mean? You don't know what I'm talking about. I took the guy and wanted to whip him. And so he said, that's when he dealt with me about Hebrews, the eighth chapter, verse 12, he remembers our sins no more and that my blood cleanses it from your heart. And then he spoke to me these words. He said, if you can't stand on the day of judgment and say they've never done me wrong, because again, when you release somebody, he said, when I forgive somebody, he said, I cleanse it from them and then I remember it no more. And he said, that's my definition of forgiveness. And if you can't stand on the day of judgment and say they've never done me wrong, you've never really released him because you're still talking about it. And so he said, I forgive and I forget. Glory to God, I'm telling you, I, I shouted all the way to the house and couldn't wait to get home to tell Don Ray, you know, he forgives and he forgets. And so what we do, we talk about forgiveness. I hear people say, you know, I'll forgive, but I'll never forget what they've done to me. Well, then you've never really applied God's method of forgiveness because the blood cleanses out of 1 John 1, 9. And then Hebrews 8, 12 said he remembers it no more. I mean, Psalms 103 says he throws it so far that he don't that he can't find it. Well, that's pretty far. That's so he does well, remember. I know you share in the book that just one really practical idea that's kind of obvious, but we don't do it. Stop talking just, about it. I, I don't think talking we do about it. it. I, think, I mean, right? I think what, yeah, I, I mean, I, I go to the hospital and I'm getting ready to pray for somebody. And I know that I, my prayer that, you know, doesn't seem to be effective if they got unforgiveness. And so what will happen is somebody say, you don't really know what they've done to my child. Because most of the time, what the devil is so deceptive at is if he attacks me, I'm smart enough to get the depression off. So what he does is he attacks your children. He attacks oh, the people yeah. that you That's love. So it's talking. an indirect attack. Yeah. And so then what happens is that you won't forgive. I mean, you, if somebody does you wrong and they slap you, you'll forgive them a lot of times. But if they slap your child, let me tell you, you know, <laughs> that point, at that point, you know, that's when mama, a mama's love, Mm -hmm. You know, will fight a chainsaw. She'll she'll walk through a, a you know a den of snakes to get to her child because that's 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 love. And so when you do something to a mama's child, I'm telling you, women are notorious for this. It's hard. I mean, guys are also in that same boat, but because of the way that women love, women can love deeper. I really yes. believe that women can, women right. can love you more than you love yourself. I mean, women have that capacity. There's a difference between male and female, but I, I believe women have. You're not allowed to talk. say that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard <laughs> to say that. That's verboten. You're yeah. not, you're not allowed to say that. So what yeah, do we do if there's, so there are people that, you know, we talked about that we can distance ourselves from, but what about those people that maybe it's a relative could be a spouse. You know, they, there's, there's no getting away from them. They're going to be in your life, but they, they want to say, cause we just established that we kind of went over it quick, but one of the key principles that you talk about in the book is just don't talk about it anymore. Don't talk about it anymore. That person who hurt you, that's just the simplest way. Um, but how do you, when you're constantly in communication with that person, and so there could be fresh hurts, fresh issues, how do you guard your heart from that? Can we just maybe just briefly, because we're coming, we're heading into well, the, I think, the hour. Can you maybe speak I think, to me about that? I think the danger is, is understanding that strife, you know, we find, uh, I was going to, you know, strife is, uh, we find where there's strife, there'll be confusion and every evil work. So I think what happens is once you understand the danger of strife, strife opens the door to the devil. In fact, James says, where there's strife, there'll be confusion. Confusion means you can't find direction. So when I find people that can't find direction, I know they are willing to get into strife. They're willing to commit unforgiveness. See, just like I wouldn't be willing to steal, I wouldn't be willing to lie then you got to be willing not to get into unforgiveness because you understand the danger of it. My, my children, my daughter sometimes reminds my son that she remembers being sick. 
and, and <laughs> that was before we got over into the forgiveness. You get into forgiveness, your prayers work. And so then, but what strife does, it stops your prayers. So do you want to stop your prayers? Is it worth, is the strife worth stopping your prayers? Is strife yes. worth stopping your money? Is strife worth stopping your healing? Is strife worth whatever the value of it is? And so sometimes, you know, the pain of that, and I, I, I'm not trying to belittle the, you know, the emotional pain and trauma that somebody experiences from some type of an attack, but I will tell you, it's more dangerous it's more dangerous to be in strife than what they've done to you. Jesus said, don't fear those what they can do to you. Fear with those that you can't see what can happen. Because what happens is, if you don't, if you, if you don't want your healing, you don't want your finances mid, then go ahead and get commit strife. I can't afford strife. So regardless, the danger of it, you have to realize how dangerous strife is. So and let's strife, people write that down. I, I really like that. Let, let's take a minute. And I want everyone to jot that down. You can write it in the chat. You can write it on a piece of paper. I can't afford strife. It's too expensive. Right. Yes. There's a, everything costs. There's a price for everything. And, but I can't always afford everything. Like I went through this period just because I turned, uh, well, I turned 61 this year, but last year when I was turning 60 and I kept thinking, you know, I want a fancy watch, you know, that would be kind of a fancy thing. I could have a fancy watch. I was also thinking about getting a fancy purse. And I was really like thinking about that. And maybe I was even praying about it. And then I finally had to say, you know, I don't think I can afford it. Can I really afford it? Because there's there's always trade-offs in life. And I think that if we could all just write that down, you know, I, I, I can't afford it. I wish I could. I mean, it'd be great if I could afford to keep this hurt going. If I could afford to keep talking about that. That's, I think that's bigger than we're, I think it's huge. I think it's massive. I think you know, every time you talk about that old hurt, yeah. you're bringing it back up. And not only, and I, I know you talked about this in the book, not only are you bringing it up in your heart, you're introducing it to other people. And then they're all like, I'll, I'll just use Prince Harry because his book just came out yesterday. Now, the, not only is he in strife with his family, now the whole world now the Taliban's in on it. Now, like everybody <laughs> yeah, the whole whole plan. is in on this strife in his life. And, you know, number one, I, I can't afford just to the price is too high because I want I want to spend my time, my energy on other things. I I want to be position myself that God is blessing me and I'm building a million dollar business and life is working and things are going my way. I want, I want that life and the price of that life is to walk free of strife. So I just have to say, no, I just, I'd love it. I would love to just tell all of you guys about all the people who are in my feelings. I mean, the stories I could tell, right? But I, I just can't afford it. I can't afford it. And I think that that was really powerful. And I hope that everybody wrote that down. Again, my guest today, um, Dr. Timothy and Donna McFall, um, their book, God Can Change Your Heart, How to Heal When You're Still Hurting. And you don't know why, because you feel like you've done everything that you're supposed to do. But you know what? If you're still talking about it, if it still bothers you, if it still hurts, if that person walked in the room and it'd be like, really, she showed up seriously. <laughs> okay. Then no, obviously if you're still talking about it, then, then you're not past it. And you know, can you really, can you really afford that? Um, this book is available free. If you're joining us live, you can go to their website. God can, God can change your heart.com. God can change. Is that right? God can change your heart.com. Mm -hmm. They get right. Okay. Yeah. You can go to their website, GodCanChangeYourHeart.com. That has a link over to Amazon where you can get the book on free on Amazon Kindle all this week. If you buy a paperback copy and you post your fabulous picture, you can compete with me. Uh, I already told God, and I I think I'm gonna win. <laughs> I fully believe I'm gonna win. But you know, if you want to try to compete for that Valentine's Day beautiful red designer coach purse, post your picture holding up the paperback and you'll be entered to win and you're going to use the wheel of names so that when I win as I'm going to everyone will know that it's not fixed right again yeah right exactly okay yeah. do it live do a live drawing do a live drawing this is not rigged this is not rigged okay 
Um, so, and that's also where you'll find out they have a three day live session uh, that they're going to do to kind of walk you through. Is it how many steps are there? There's five, seven steps, seven keys. Seven, seven, seven seven keys. Steps. They're going to walk you through the seven keys. And we didn't, maybe we'll hit it real quick before we end because you talk a lot about, which I thought was really good about listening in a way that makes people like spending time with you. Uh, uh -huh. understanding how heartache affects you, guarding your heart, keeping your heart free from judgment, uh, changing your heart through action, taking those action actually changes your heart, cleansing your heart, setting your heart free and listening from the heart. Why don't we do that in the final minutes that we have remaining? Why don't you talk a little bit about listening so that people actually enjoy spending time with you? Well, I think, you know, we find in First Peter 3 that a great price in the sight of God is a quiet and meek spirit. And that's being able to listen to people because people, if you listen to someone, they care about it. I mean, they, you know, they think they're, they're believing that you care because you're listening to what they have to say. So I began to practice this in the sawmill with guys that, that, you know, that had given me such a hard time. So I would find out something, for instance, like one of their sons would play football. Well, I'd, first thing I'd do when I got to work on Monday morning, I'd, I'd say, you know, hey, hey, how'd Junior do over the weekend? And, and then I would listen to him. And, and even though I played football, I didn't tell him anything about me. I listened because I realized that if you ask questions, it's like a doctor probing you. And so I would listen to what they had to say. And it was amazing to me that by me listening, uh, there was willing then to come to me when they had trouble. They'd catch me out in the warehouse and I'd say, Tim, I need you to pray for my wife. I need you to pray for my son. And in front of everybody, they would be, you know, say vile things about God, but when they got me by myself, and it was a result of them liking me, because people like people that listen to them. They don't like people to preach to them. They don't like people to talk to them. And that was one of the things the Lord dealt with me about is learning to keep my mouth shut. I, I had a guy that was working in sawmill at that point, and he said, can you help me because I got trouble in my marriage? I said, well, if you'll listen to your wife, I said, but you have a problem. You won't listen. He, and he said, what do you mean? I said, well, she's going to say something. And I said, thoughts are triggered by association. If I talk about a dog, you think about a dog, a black dog, you think about a black dog. I said, she's going to say something and it's going to trigger something in you. And I said that you're going to hear that thought coming down the road. This is why I explained it to him. I said, you're going to hear that thought coming down the road. And I said, don't say anything. But I said, you'll shake when it gets near you. Let it go on by you. And then just shut up and listen. I said, if you say anything at all, just say I, I understand. Don't, I said, don't respond in anything that she said. He came to me two weeks later and he said, oh, my God. And he said, I've been a miracle change in my marriage. Yeah. I said, well, that's what happened when you first got married. You listened. And I said, you know, I'll go somewhere back when I was pastor. And they'd say, now, don't go down around old crazy Henry because, you know, he's working on his truck. Well, I go down where crazy Henry was. We can use that term crazy Henry. I don't know the day's language. But I go down there and watch him when he's working. I would just watch what he was doing and then listen to him. He'd start to talk to me. Next thing you know, I get him saved and his dog saved. You know, I get both of them. I, you know, I work, would work within it because people love people that listen to them. And what happens is, is because you know it's a mechanicism that's working in your brain, you want to say something. So you just learn to let that be quiet and listen to what somebody has to say. And you'll be amazed at how much they like you. I'm telling you, it's amazing the effect of that one principle that I applied in my life is just listen to somebody. And so I found it worked so well that, you know, we, we'd we stop and talk to somebody and I would listen to him. And the next thing you know, we'd be going out to lunch with him. And, and my kids used to say, mom, don't let him out of the car because I would listen. I didn't talk. I just walk up to somebody and say, how are you doing? Hey, what's going on? And then they would start. It's amazing how God their angel would prompt them to start to talk to me so I could lead them to the Lord. I didn't immediately then lead them to the Lord because to me, every person is an opportunity to, you know, to lead somebody to the Lord. So listening is an amazing part. And then when you listen, though, the problem is, is you find yourself taking on their problems. You find yourself, you know, in business, we found ourselves having problems that we had no solutions for. And so just like in business, I mean, you know, sometimes we would be in count receivables, we'd have maybe a half a million dollars owed to us, but getting it Monday to come in, you know, it'd be Friday, I would have to have $200,000 by Monday or Tuesday. Well, you know, that can try to pressure you because, you know, cash is king when you're doing business, you have to have, you have to pay your debtors, you have to be able to pay those off. Well, sometimes we didn't know what to do with it. So God devised between Don and I, we came up with this, is a little box. So what we would do is we had to get the care. God says, give me your care because the care is mental anxiety. It's solicitude. You know, when you have a care, I, I, it's a problem without a solution. And when you have problems without solutions, it brings depression. It brings trouble. I mean, that's, uh, that's what brings depression 
is, yeah. you know, you can have self-induced depression, but when you have a problem without a solution. So I, I knew that. So what God would do is we would take like the money thing. I say, God, okay, you said take the care of that and give it to you. And so I, I, I couldn't figure out how to get it to him. You know, I, I'm sending down trying to figure out how to get the care to him. So we found out one of the ways we would do is we'd write down the problem and we'd pray over it. You have to pray over it. You have to pray in faith. We just say, Father, we take this and believe we receive that money in the name of Jesus. Uh, Satan, take your hands off our money. And now we believe that money's in. And Father, we give the care of this over to you. And we'd write that and put it in a box. And then when a thought would come to me, I'd say, no, I've given that to God. It's in the box. So what we would do then, we found that that brought a tremendous uh, solution. I mean, I, I've never put anything, this, everything we put in this box has come to pass because we're trusting God. Now, there's right. been some things in the box a little longer than others because sometimes we put people in the box. Okay, it's like, <laughs> Father God, I can't handle that person and, and, and I'm trusting you. You said if I take the care of that, you would take care of my cares. You have the promise of God out of 1 Peter 5 that if you give him the care, he'll take care of it for you. And so as long as you got it, he can't have it. So I'd say, no, that's in God's hands. I don't have that anymore. So the box was a tremendous thing. That was one of the things that helped us in business. I, I don't know how a person could do business because I will tell you, even though, you, you know, you're praying and again, in count receivables, I don't know when you're flowing in business, you're doing, you know, you're, you're making lots of money, but you can have lots of money come in, lots of money go out. You have to have that money come in. And so sometimes it seemed like adjusters and things, people would hold the money back. This always seemed to cause them to release it. Monday morning would come along. I wouldn't even be thinking about it. I, on my way to work, I'd say, no, that's in the box. I am not going to touch that. It's in God's hands. I trust my father God enough that he said, if I give him the problem, he would take care of it for me. I trust him enough to do that. And so we would make the agreement that we're giving it into his hands. He's going to take care of it. It's in the box. And in the middle of the night, I'd wake up and the box would want to talk to him. He's like, what are you talking to that box? Okay, no, I'm not, because it tries to talk its way out of the box. And if I found myself doing it again, I'd, I'd take another paper and put it in the box and repent of it and say, no, Father God, I've given that to you. It's in your hands. Yes. And it's amazing what God can do for us when we get it over in his hands. Because so, a lot anything of time that's, so anything that's on your heart, we're talking about God can change your heart. So anything that's on your heart whether it's a painful situation from the past, a difficult situation that you're facing right now, a dream or a hope for your future, a person, a relationship, anything that's on your heart, that's heavy on your heart, write it down. You guys can all do that right now. Write it down. Just start writing it down and find a box, decorate a box, make it a pretty box, ugly box, ugly box just put it in a box. Make that your God box. And put everything in there and say, I, I, don't, I can't carry this in my heart. I need to get the strife out of my heart. I need to get the unforgiveness out of my heart. I need to get the worry, the fear, the anger, everything out of my heart. And I'm going to put it into the box and I'm going to let God deal with it. It's, it's God's it. now. And uh, I love this idea. I think and what I've loved about this hour, we're coming to, we're coming to the top of the hour. Um, what I've loved is that it's just been really, really practical. And I hope that this has been super helpful for everyone. I've been doing the box. You know what I've been doing, Tim? What's that? What's that? I've been marching around my box. Hey, <laughs> I have yeah, been, I'm I'll, I put everything in the box and then I'll put the box on the floor and I'll march around it. And I've been singing, uh, what's that song? Is it, uh, Walking around these walls. I thought by now that all you know, that song, right? So I would, God can't sing, go or girl, don't sing. But I play that song and I walk around my box and I'm like, Lord, I thought you'd have answered a long time ago, but I'm still marching around this box and I've put it in there. I'm not taking it out of the box because I know if I take it out of the box, it's going to go right back into my heart. And the only person who's going to suffer, the only one who's going to pay the price, a price I cannot afford is me because it's going to rob me and the people I love most. That That's who's going to pay the price. And I just can't afford it. So I love this box idea. My kids come over. They think I'm crazy. I'm like, I'm marching around the box. I got to get me a, my daughter. We got to get her a husband. I mean, that, I, there is a husband in that box. He better pop Hallelujah. out of that box soon. Yes. Now, now, now better be the husband to end all husbands. I'm not playing. Anyway, any final thoughts? No, I think, I think you know, it comes back to just basically if we want to walk in God, we got to have a clean heart. And, and it's yep. basically learning how to get our heart to be clean. And, you know, it, it usually what defiles us isn't 
sometimes the sin that we think about, it's usually the things that we have to do with people, you know, yeah, that's, where really, that's what it comes around to. I mean, obviously, you know, we still have to stop other things. I mean, obviously, we, you know, we have to not lie and still and things like that. But I think it's being willing, the you know, not having the willingness to commit strife. I think that's the key to the whole thing is just, in other words, I won't, you won't steal, but people will just commit strife just like that. And I think once you understand the dangers of that, I mean, in other words, I think we need to write big notes and put them up, you know, strife is dangerous, you know, because what it does is. I love that one. We just can't afford strife. It's too expensive. You just can't afford it. And so I think, you know, once you learn that, it's like, okay, you can deal with your, your aunt and your uncle and your cousin and somebody else because you realize, okay, that's a dangerous thing that the devil will do. Because the devil, you know, he'll use, and as long as you're subject to it, he keeps doing it. Yep, and that's right. As long as it works. He's not very creative. Yeah. As yeah. long as it works, he'll just keep on that's doing right. it and keep on doing it. So don't let it that's work. It. Put everything into the box. I love this yeah. idea. I hope that everybody, in fact, yeah, in everybody who's going to buy a box, box, just go ahead and type put it in, in the, the chat. I'm getting me a box. If you like my idea, marching around that box, say, I am getting me a box. I'm going to put in everything that's on my heart, everything that I can possibly think of. And you know what? I think it'd be really good too. I'm not going to talk about anything in the box. Yes, right. I'm not, I'm not even going to, I, let me know. We, we've got a wrap, but I'm going to throw this out. Like, I'm not even going to talk to God about anything in the box. Cause it's already in the box. Yeah. It's his problem. You know, it's his. It's, his. it's, his it's like, it's it, like you're tempted to say, God, what did I meant to tell you one more time about that? Can we get a husband? Like now it's in the box, all that stuff in the box. I'm just believing for it. I've given it to you. I'm trusting you. And I'm just going to keep marching. I'm going to keep, these walls are going to. I like the singing up. part. I like that part. Of what I like saying. that. We're saying, you don't want to hear me sing. You definitely, you, you guys no, no, heard Jesus, Jesus small it. sample of it. That was, that was uh, with some people were frightened and left the room at that point. Matt can cut that out. But uh, yeah, this has been wonderful. Um, again, I'm your host, Donna Parto with the Lifestyle Freedom Show with Donna Parto. And my guest today has been Dr. Timothy and Donna McFall. And they are the authors of the Amazon number one bestseller. It's been dominating. Christian counseling for weeks now. Yes. God can change your heart. How to heal when you're still hurting. Don't know why. Powerful stuff. This is the stuff that took them from can't afford toilet paper to mul several multi million dollar businesses and grandkids and great grandkids and a blessed <laughs> life. And, you know, God wants great things for all of us. He wants us to be blessed. And that word blessed means happy and to be envied. Everybody around you should be looking at you saying, I can't believe she won that first. <laughs> yeah, you, everybody around you should be saying, wow, that is just the God is just blessing and blessing and blessing. And I think we've given you some really practical tools to make that happen. Tamara, I'll turn it over to you. I think that purse would go really well with your sweater. I, you know, I would saw the picture. I you guys need to do it online look in the so you know it's honest. She wants that purse. I may have to get that for you for Christmas or something. You know? uh, put it in the box, Donna, and I don't want to talk about it anymore. It's in the box. It's in the box. So well, it would go with the sweater that you bought for me in Ireland. So. <laughs> that looks so good on you. <laughs> so that was amazing. It was really good. I mean, Tim, that was just. I mean, I had no idea some of the ideas. I don't have a care box, but I'm going to get one today. Get box. I have a few things that are dragging me down, and I think I'm done with it. I think I am done. I'm just going to get put it in the box and let it go. What a feeling. It's really good. What a feeling, because we seem to think we can let it go, and then we wake up back in the morning back. And back again. But the box will remind me. And I like the idea of writing it again. Write it again. If it comes to you again, write it again. And put another slip in the box. God, in case now, you forgot. just keep putting that. Just <laughs> keep putting it in the box. Just put it in there until you're oh, done. Oh, you're so tired of writing it that you're like, okay, I really am not going to talk about it, think about it, pray it. It's in that box. Yes, just good yeah, stuff. I love it. Thank you. Thank you for taking the God's heart for you to put this out to the world and for reaching out to Donna and to working with her and. All that you're doing, there's a lot of people on your Facebook group. I'm so excited that you have so many people that are following your message. And Donna, you're so amazing. I just, every time I know I've known you all these years and you think I'd just be like, yeah, it's just Donna. But no, every time I hear you, you're just such Donna is amazing. amazing. She is an amazing You bring out coach. the best in people, you know? She's an amazing just, coach. Yeah, you are. She's amazing. 
Well, and if anybody else wants to work with Amazing Donna, like I had the privilege of doing, and uh, Tim McFall and his lovely wife here have had the privilege of um, being alongside over the last several months as they were launching their book, writing their book, pulling it together, um, uh, there is an opportunity for you. We actually have an opening this month, which is, I know, Donna, you were a little bit, you know, Not Tim and office. Donna graduate. There's room for the next person. Yes. Right. Yes. So DonnaParto.com forward slash rocket. If you would like to apply to work with Donna Parto and uh, maybe be sitting uh, with us all here on one of these interviews in the future, envision I'm envisioning this for you. Um, putting your own message out to the world. I'd love to meet you. I get to be the first person to talk to you, but then you're, it's all Donna from there. And what a blessing that is. So thank you. Thank you all for all that you do. I know I speak on behalf of everyone that has been on this uh, video and uh, interview. And I just, I'm just just praying great blessings as you move forward with getting your message out and probably future books. I can yep. see it. <laughs> Love you guys. Okay. I'm going to miss you guys so much. Thank you. you. Thank you, Donna, very much. Thank you. So Thank much. You. Great job. This is powerful. Super.